As the pandemic evolves, we humans are not the only creatures facing a new reality. Zoos and aquariums across the world have gone quiet. Human visitors are no longer allowed. The animals, though, still need to be fed and cared for. And since ticket sales stopped, so has the flow of money to pay the bills. Zoos are under intense pressure to adapt or go the way of the dodo. Tom Hayes explores some of their survival tactics. It's a trip to the zoo like never before, and the excitement's building. I want to see the lions, the bison, the grizzly bears. I love the baby giraffe. That would be Baby Longlegs, born just over a week ago at the Toronto Zoo. Normally, she would be a big attraction here with 1.2 million visitors every year. But this year is different. Go ahead. Peyton, Jackson, and the rest of the family in the car to take in the Toronto Zoo drive through They came forward with a plan that allows people to stay in their vehicles, stage in the parking lot, literally drive through our front entrance, and use a combination of our walking paths as well as our Zoomobile uh, route to get a behind the scenes, unique experience. Say bye, rhinos. Bye, rhinos. Bye-bye. That unique experience will generate revenue, but not even close to the $51 million annual operating cost. I'll just stop. I'm running out of meat. Attractions across the country are facing a real challenge to keep their creatures fed and doors open. It's honestly, it's like comparable to a death, a death of a dream, a death of, you know, a passion. Cherry Brook Zoo in St. John's, New Brunswick closed for good because of COVID-19. The Vancouver Aquarium in Stanley Park is losing $3 million a month. The hope is to open sometime in June with limited tickets, but planning is also underway for a worst case scenario. Given that we put aside money to make sure that we can rehome the animals if we need to close, we need to make sure that we're not you know, just leaving those animals uh, without support and finding new homes for them is gonna be a top priority for us then. That also costs money. What does the public really want? What would be most critical for them to feel comfortable coming back to us for a safe experience? The Calgary Zoo has reopened to a limited amount of visitors, but its star attractions, the giant pandas, are on their way home. The zoo can't get enough bamboo to feed the bears during the pandemic, so they will head back to China with no public viewings before they leave. Just outside Montreal, it takes about 30 pounds of meat every day to feed the tigers at Granby Zoo. Half a million dollars a year to feed all 1,500 animals. With no opening date in sight, the money's running out. We couldn't expect to be able to run on a two month, three months maybe basis. And after that, it will be really tough. We'll probably need the bank help and uh, people like the foundation to be helping us or at the government level also some program. The food budget is also an issue here at the Toronto Zoo. It costs over a million dollars a year to feed the animals. That million dollars usually comes from parking revenue, from a parking lot that normally doesn't look like this. With no paying guests for the past eight weeks, many attractions have reached out online. These guys are from South Africa. It's a different way to tour the zoo, but the hope is that the drive through concept will still allow for social distancing and allow families an escape from the COVID lockdown. Just the ability to get them out of the house and to do something as a family, um, and obviously to support the zoo and all the employees that have been working throughout to take care of the animals, we're happy to come out and see what it's all about today. Jackson and Peyton give the zoo drive through a thumbs up. Finally, getting to enjoy the animals, and it sounds like the feeling was mutual. I think they were happy to see us. 